what is disruption with integrity and leverage? Now, I've come across folks that disrupt and they take a shot. And sometimes in that disruption, they win, but sometimes they lose. The biggest success stories that I've seen is when folks disrupt when they've had enough. The truth will set you free. The leverage is there with integrity. And when that happens, whoever's getting disrupted and isn't ready for it, they better watch out. Check this out. You're going to enjoy this journey. It's a phenomenal storytelling process of how two forces came together to what we are now building right as I do this video. And we're going to want you to take notes for all the entrepreneurs that are out there today that can learn on how to collapse time, turn decades into days, stand on the shoulders of others by trusting a process I have with me. Taekwon Dean. My man. Right, Taekwon. I'm fine, man. Uh, AKA Takwa. Yes. And street name back in Neptune, New Jersey, Taik. Taik. Yes. Yes. So, um, you know, it's so phenomenal being with you today. You are a, a new family fast friend of mine. Yes, sir. You know, we met each other about 35 or 30 or 25 days ago. Right. And, um, you know, in business and in life, folks, you'll come across folks where even in the first time you meet them, the energy could be great, but the action afterwards, and I suggest that no matter who you're doing business with, action is the key. Once you know that these are folks that, that, that are in your heart and you would invite into your house, action-oriented leaders who also have a good verbal language behind what they're doing is very key to any kind of growth in business. And, and that's what happened when I met Tyke. Yes, sir. Um, he came to my gym. We were, we were just disrupting and starting a AAU program for 16 and 17-year-old kids, one team each. And what was interesting is, for me, it was just all about how do I take the money out of AAU right. and really train basketball players on how to be two-way basketball players. Yes, sir. I had no idea that we were, we were going to be connected on that. Meaning, you know, if you play sports or if you play basketball and if you're not jumping out of the roof or right. jump, jumping through the roof and you have to learn, it's not just about three-point shooting, which is like really paramount here in Monmouth County, New Jersey. How do you play defense? How do you play team basketball? How do you play offense? And right. how do you get better? Right. And that was really how it started. And then lo and behold, you came into the gym one day yeah. and disrupted me. And uh, Taekwondo's biggest thing was go look at the first five or first four draft picks in the NBA. And it was all European players because as he played overseas, and we're going to get into that in a second, for 17 years, he was able to see that they were building a fundamental style of basketball that 10, 15 years later is now beginning to really have its footprint inside the NBA right. and college basketball. Right. Let's talk a little bit about how you were home temporarily, right. Right? right? And somebody said, hey, go check out Rob Gill at the fort. He's building something. You didn't even know me. I didn't know you at all. Um, living, in, living in France, uh, uh, I read, a, Lord, listen to a lot of audio books. And one of them is, is Spotify, Netflix, Uber. Mm. And... When you look at those stories, uh, the all all of these guys had had a certain vision, but they were going against giants, and everybody thought it was impossible. And I looked at uh, AAU basketball, just basketball in America, period, and I saw that we were we were far behind, and it started with uh, the Olympics with Michael Jordan mm. and and the Dream Team. You know, the the gap was so far far in between that. The rest of the world couldn't keep up, but what it did, what it allowed, it allowed those players in Europe to dream. And if you see those those players that dream are now MVPs at the NBA right now. So, you know, I looked at looked at America as uh, we're getting a little lazy, we're getting a little comfortable, and the rest of the world is, is is gaining on us. So, I saw what you were doing, and I said, you know, this is the opportunity to to put our put my footprint, put your footprint on, on something that we're going against giants. The, the, the alarm system's coming for the giants that, right now as we speak. Dis, that's disruption. The ambulance is on its way to uh, Neptune, New Jersey. Go ahead. That, that's disruption. But, you know, when I saw what you were doing, I saw your social media presence, I realized that you're on to something that uh, I, I like to say dinosaurs. A lot of these people are, are dinosaurs. They, they're not able to capitalize on on the future and the future is, is social media. But you know, let me ask you a question, Taekwon, because I think this is important because I, I, although you just gave me such an unbelievable compliment, the truth is I was just building out two teams right. and what I wanted to do was have a competitive advantage. So I went to social media to get some kids to play. Right. I wasn't thinking globally the way you thought. Right. Um, it was a blessing when you came to see me because you changed my whole thinking and just yes. tapped into my business head. So, and I say this on tape, I can't take credit for this. I'm going to give him the credit because he came to see me and painted a picture that I wasn't even thinking of. Once he painted the picture, I then began to run with it. 
the best way I can. And that's where him and I have really been having fun. Sometimes we're texting each other two, three, four in the morning. Right. But, you know, you've had an unbelievable journey to your success track. Yes, sir. And um, my thought is, when you first started playing overseas, and, and, and he just pointed out in 1992, the Dream Team was where all the people overseas started to have that dream, to which, by the way, is now coming to fruition in the last 10 years of the NBA. We right. see that all over the place. But my question is, because you, you are a mature thinker. Yes, sir. You're ahead of your time, I believe, yes, even what you did in high school. Um, what Were you on that mindset of how can American kids keep up with what's happening over here even right away? Or did that take time just when you were spending so much time in Europe? Well, no, uh, it was right away. You know, once I got to Europe, obviously coming from Louisville, we private jets everywhere. We, we had everything at our disposal. When I got there, it was... I had to wash my uniform, mm. home, you know. I didn't have my own locker, but I saw the way they started from 6 a.m. I mean, the youth, they started at 6 a.m. They practiced with us, and they didn't finish until around 12 at night. Got it. And I said, well, this is different. You yeah. Know, these kids are not complaining. They, mm. Their goal is NBA. It's not college. It's not high school. Yeah. Their goal is NBA, and they were literally working for that. And I said that. Wow. You say you're 10,000 hours. Yeah. They were putting in their 10,000 hours, and it's it's showing 17 years later. Yeah, so so um, uh, what, what Taekwon's referring to is Malcolm Gladwell's book, The Outlier, right. where he talked about uh, the Canadian hockey team that lived in a certain age bracket that right. when you put in 10,000 hours, it makes you an expert. Right. And no matter whether that's if you're going to be in the financial planning space, if you're going to practice at a young age for any sport, if you commit 10,000 hours, it puts you in a space of uh, proximity, not only to great people in your field, but also you become great as a result of. Right. So what's interesting, folks, and please take this and rewind the back, grab a pen and piece of paper. Let me just kind of tell the story. Taekwon went to play four years at Louisville. Yep. In his third year, they made it to the final four where he led the nation in three-point shooting. Yes, sir. Is the all-time three-point shooter at Louisville to this day. And you were there what years? I was there 2000. 2002 to 2006. Okay, graduated in 2006 and it's 2023 and he's still the leading three-point scorer there. But what's interesting is he came off a phenomenal high school career and as he left high school, he was on his way to Syracuse. Yes. But because he read books and listened to audio tapes back then, he was a big fan of Rick Pitino. Yeah. I love the story. It's unbelievable. And if you mind sharing with the folks, and by the way, he already had a full scholarship to a phenomenal team. Can you share a little bit about how you landed in Louisville? Well, um, during that summer, uh, I went to the Nike, I mean, Adidas ABCD camp. After your junior or after your senior? Uh, after my junior year. Okay, so you so already had the full in. ride set up? Yeah, okay. well, not really. I was uh, I was with Nike uh, before my sophomore year. Got it. And I made the jump to Adidas, which if anybody know around that time, uh, George Ravelin and Sonny Vaccaro were at- Sonny Vaccaro, very famous, yeah. At, at odds with each other. And okay. me making that jump from Nike to Adidas Sonny believed in me that much. Well, you were disrupting back then. I've always That's been, all you do. You like I've to always, disrupt. I love I've it. Always, and George Ravlin, makes sense. George Ravlin did not like me making that jump. Yeah, there's a lot of people right now aren't liking some of the jumps right. you're making. Well, so yeah. so if you so that summer I I, I went from unknown to uh, I'm getting maybe twenty to thirty letters a day just by that move from a uh, hundred colleges. It, it it was like overnight. Mm. So when I went to ABCD, this was the the infamous game with LeBron James and uh, Lenny Cook. So Lenny Cook was the fa the favorite going into that tournament, and LeBron James beat him so bad that no one heard of Lenny Cook since. Go ahead. Right, and uh, funny story about that. Me and Melo became very close uh, at the uh, Colorado USA camp. Carmelo Anthony, who also uh, won a national championship at Syracuse, married to Lala, now divorced. <laughs> Yeah, so we, we became, and that's when I met LeBron at, at, at that same camp. Got it. And people don't know, but uh, me and LeBron had a, had a great rapport. And um, so going into ABCD, you had Sebastian Telfair, you had uh, LeBron, you had Lenny Cook. You had all of the stars. Yeah. And um, Sonny Vaccaro became very close to me. Uh, he knew my story. I told him my story then, him and Pam. And he said, however I can help you, I will do it. Yeah. So... Fast forward to that that infamous day where uh, Syracuse they came to my practice. Yep. And now yeah. you're in uh, you're a senior or a junior. This yeah. So uh, now it's before the season starts. Before the season Got starts. It. And, okay. And uh, that morning, which is typical uh, after doing my workout, 
I come in and I turn on ESPN and Rick Pitino was just fired by Boston. And the day before- Boston Celtics. He was the day in the before NBA. I received a letter, just a general letter from Louisville. I run upstairs, rip, you know, rip it open and, and uh, I tell my guardian at the time, you have to call this number. Not thinking it was possible, but I knew, okay, let's see. Yeah. And so he said, are you sure? Yeah. When I go to school, when I come back, let me know what happens. Yeah. So Syracuse was at my practice and obviously they, they loved everything. And he said, well, after, you know, Jim is going to call you when you get home, Jim Behan. Cool. Get home, Jim Behan. you know, he's called, he gives me a call and two seconds later, Rick, I, I hear a beep, you know, it was landline at the time, no cell phones. Yeah. Uh, pick up the phone. Hey, it's Rick Pitino. Yeah. Immediately, I dropped the phone. I told the story before. I mean, palms are sweating. I'm shaking. And I tell my guardian, "What do I do?" Yeah. And he's like, "Pick it up." So, Rick is giving the, the, his his presentation. I'm Did like, he know you at that point? He knew nothing, I, and so I didn't understand what happened. All right, how does he? And I said, how, "Did you talk to anybody?" Yeah. And he, he was like, "No, I got the secretary." Obviously, the secretary reached Rick, but the first thing what I didn't understand was Rick called Sonny Vaccaro. Okay, so Sonny is his go-to. Sonny is his advisor. Is it. It, uh, and so he asked Sonny, who is this kid? Yeah. Never heard of him, but he contacted me. Sonny gave full blessings, him and Pam. Character. And I didn't know at the time, but so Rick is telling me, well, we want to give you a scholarship. Uh, want to set up a visit. I said, coach, I don't, need, I don't need a visit. I really don't care. I understood the, the, the New Jersey, Louisville connection, Milt Wagner, Billy yeah, Thompson. That's right. You know, so and they I won a national history. championship. I knew my history on that part, so I knew there was synergy there. So, and I was a big Muhammad Ali fan. Really, knowing Muhammad I Ali didn't know that. is from Louisville. Yeah, made perfect. He sense threw his to gold me. medal in the river, right? Right. Isn't that, yeah. right. Made perfect sense to me. So, for, but Louisville was not prominent when you said you wanted to go there. Right. But Rick Pitino, you had said you had read a couple or listened to some books about Rick Pitino in right. high school. Right. Was he really one of your idols? See. This is the thing for young players is why I want to give back now is I knew my strength. Hmm. I knew my weaknesses. My strength was I can shoot the ball. My weaknesses was I couldn't go left. You know, even though I, I worked hours a day, it just wasn't really in me. So I was able to hide it by my, my shooting. Got it. So I knew that defense was always first with Rick Pitino. Got it. I was a, I was, I, I like to call myself a dog. I, I always led with defense first. Really? So for me, it was night and day. I need to play for him. Yeah. Because if you play defense, he lets you shoot any shot. Yeah. So. Yeah. And you I, knew that in high school, though. I knew that in high school. Just by reading up on him. I know that, I know he, at that time, I, I didn't have a father figure. That was one. Two, uh, uh, every player that left him, they said that they, they left a better, better person, but a better man. Mm. So I knew on all fronts that he was going, he was the guy. Yeah, and, and, and just so everyone knows at that point, Rick Bettino had already won a college championship with Kentucky. He was he was coaching for the Celtics, but started his career uh, with Providence and Billy, Billy the kid, um, I forget yep. his last name. Billy Donovan. Billy Donovan was really his first marquee yep. player that they beat Georgetown in the, in the Sweet 16 Elite Eight after losing during the regular season to get to the Final Four. Right. So let me ask you a question. So, I mean, this isn't about disparaging Syracuse. You were going to go, it sounds like. Right. Um, what kind of risk was that to not only walk away from the Cuse, right, right, right. And, and Carmelo Anthony, of course, to do that? Like, what, what, were, you, were you dealing with stuff at home on, on naysayers? Was there any of that going on when you made that move? Well, to be honest, uh, I had Clemson, now we could talk about it, they did offer me some money to come there. Mm. That was ACC, uh, you know, um, that was a, a great offer, but uh, me thinking about Syracuse, you, you're in the East. Big East is everything coming from New yeah, Jersey. So and Syracuse is big. And time. then Carmelo, we had that relationship. So, you know, it was it was a big risk. Uh, and I like to go against the grain. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Louisville was the dark horse. You yeah. know, Denny Crum left. Yeah. The, the the program was was at a low and coming from Jersey, I would like to change. That was just my mindset. Yeah. Amazing. So dare, dare I say disruptive with leverage. The leverage right. was you knew your work ethic. Yes. You knew what you were capable. And you have integrity. There's no question about it. Right. You even said no to cash. Right. Now, and, and by the way, I'm not judging if anyone did do it. I'm right. Because it's, no money is scarcity. I get it. Right. 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 
So the integrity was there. You disrupted with leverage. Leverage was you knew what you were capable of doing when you wake up every day and put your put your clothes on one leg at a time. You had the confidence in who you were as a person, which, by the way, the level of maturity based on the journey you had gone on up until that point is off the charts, and we're going to get into that as well. Not even normal, completely outside any kind of level of even what an outlier could do, especially when I'm here and they didn't have a good left hand. And that's big when it comes to basketball, especially when you want to play the next level. Right. So, um, all right, so now you're – you're deciding that you're going to go to Louisville. Yes. Now, this was before your se- before the season started? Was before, this the after- se- before the season started. So this started. before, and you had a great senior year. Right. You guys made it all the way to the finals right. of the TLC? Yes. Yep. Yes. So, which, by the way, the TLC is the tournament champions in New Jersey. It's one school wins the championship, and they had just happened to play against one of the best schools in history. Right. They would have probably beaten everybody else at that point. Even that regular season, they did beat them at the buzzer. Right. With that being said, though, um, as your season progressed and as you became more of a prominent player, right, right, were you getting more letters or were you already committed to Louisville? I was getting let. I mean, at, at that point at Neptune High School, they they created my own mailbox. Mm. There was so many letters that was that was coming in, and no, no letters as a sophomore, right? No letters as a sophomore. And then you made a shift, and boom. And I'll tell you a story where um, where where I I was adopted by my my best friend's uh, uncle. And when he first saw me, he said, you're going to make the NBA. Mm. Not knowing, you know. Uh, he said, but where? What, what age was that? Do you remember? This was age 12. Okay, sixth, seventh grade? Age 12. And, you know, he said, you know, I'm going to see you through. So he, we came up with a game plan. And that very, I want to say a year later, I got invited to uh, a Nike uh, Invitational in St. Louis. And the top three players from this camp, goes to the big uh, camp in Indianapolis. National. Right. And it was just one of those things, don't come back without without being number one. Got it. So when I get on campus at St. Louis, I do what I always do. I took a tour of the campus. I call that uh, manifesting mm-hmm. while everyone was asleep. And I, I took my, my, my morning run, and it was just a feeling that came over that I'm going to I'm gonna come back. I went from unknown, and it was 200 players in this camp, and I finished number one, mm. which I got invited. At to, what age? 14. This was uh, this was yep my sophomore year. Okay, got it. And from there, you had D Brown that was there, Matt Walsh, yeah. uh, Darren Williams. You had you had a lot of players yeah. that I got invited to the big camp, and that's when my my life changed. When I got back from St. Louis, I went from unknown to ranked top 50. Mm. And obviously, the people in Neptune couldn't understand that shift. Yeah, you were playing above that quickly. How you're do talking you talk about the coaching or just regular just people? Everyone, it, it. it just went from I went from unknown because I didn't play my freshman year at Red Bank. Yeah, really? Nobody. So we can go back into this story. Yeah, that, that was one of the biggest regrets. Well, not regret. What high just school? Red Bank High School, Red Bank uh, Regional. Red Bank RBR. It was the it, it was my introduction into. Um, I don't want to say it was it was racism. I, I can't really put my, my it is what it is. My whatever whatever on the story it. is. Yep. But um, that's why me and Billy Billy Gilligan. Uh, no one knows he was my mark. Meaning you have Mustafa Barksdale and Billy Gilligan coming from Red Bank. These are the guys that made it, and you know they were the the top of the, the top. Standard for you. And so that was my mark, Billy Gilligan and Mustafa Barksdale. But there is a there is a history here. So Red Bank has two sides of the tracks, you, have, mm-hmm. you know? And on my side of the tracks, it was m- much talent, but they never got the shot when they went from Red Bank, I mean, the middle school to mm-hmm. Red Bank Regional. And that window closes with lost talent. So I grew up knowing that this was a possibility. How did you know that? Did people, you just, you seem to be able to see things that others don't see in advance of. People was that in my always neighborhood? there? Yeah, it was, yeah. It was like a, a known thing in my neighborhood that, you know, uh, there's so much lost talent that could have made the NBA that had the talent. And for me, I, I had that that grit to say it's not going to be me. Mm. And so I remember Taj Holden, who was, uh, yeah. you know, went to Maryland. We grew up together around the corner from each other. I remember the first day of tryout, which was around 630. And I live right here on Bridge. And if you know from Bridge Avenue to the Red Bank Regional High School, yeah. it's, it's a few miles. Yeah. And this would be a tough walk. If you had this walk is before day. cell phones. Yeah. And tryouts was at, you know, 630. Taj yeah. told me, I'm going to pick you up. Yeah. 
you know, at five, you know, at, at six. Yeah. You know, gets around 545. Yeah, man. No cell phones. Yeah. It's pouring down raining. It may sound like a movie. Wow. It gets to about 515. I realize he, you know, he's not coming. Yeah. So strap it up and I I, I sprint from Bridge Ave to, yeah. to the Reving. And when I get there, coach opens the door, you're late, slams the door. Good job, coach. You know, so uh I'm gonna look for that interview. No, it's it's real. So he just made what my, was his name? Uh what was his name? John Mr. J uh Johnson. Uh Ryan Johnson. I don't know if you remember, he was sort of the star there. I'm not from, I'm from Bayonne. Oh, well. So I moved here. Last no, that's why they don't see me coming either. Last name Johnson, I don't remember his first uh, name. All right, Ryan. But this is sort of, I call it like the, the Michael Jordan story of getting cut, you know, uh, in, in his sophomore year. But So this is your freshman year at RBR? My freshman year. You get cut, you're late. I get late. Yep. Uh, literally makes me run a mile, you know, and then, you know, once I get back, you're on freshman. I know my talent. Everyone knows. So you were already a marquee player at that point. You should have been on Everyone, not varsity. No, I should have been on varsity. As a freshman. As a freshman. Everyone knew my talent. So there's no confusion. Got it. And he places me on freshman. Too easy. Then JV. Too easy again. I had to actually go to the principal because he did not want me mm. on varsity. I had to go to the principal and say, I don't understand. Yeah. You know, my talent is here, but I'm not getting. And so the principal spoke to him, but. I sat the bench yeah. the whole year. As a freshman. As a freshman. Yep. Not until the last game. Yeah. State it was in state tournament. Uh but in player, practice you were dogging people, I bet. Dogging, but just just didn't never never played. Yeah. To where state championship got in foul trouble. He was forced to put me in. We mm. were down. I I, I wanna rephrase it, maybe down nine and I made score twelve points in like three minutes. And from there, my, my best friend's uncle said he'll never come back here. Yeah. And I left after that. Yeah. After that game, I, I, I enrolled into Neptune. Wow. Wow. So, so ooh, there's a lot there. Yeah. Um, you know, the first thing that stands out to me, though, I got to tell you, is the fact that you went to the principal as a freshman yeah. to have a grown-up conversation. Yeah. I mean, that the level of confidence you must have had. Well, I knew, I knew this was my way out. Yeah. And I wasn't going to let anyone get in the way of that. But there's a lot of people that know it could be the way out. And right. certain type of things that come their way, right. like that's a big thing. Right. You know what I mean? Like they may have just been happy just to stay on JV. Right. Right? But you knew, I mean, to me that's amazing. Like it wasn't like, like that's a deep, that's a real conversation to have with somebody. Right. And um, that's impressive. The level of maturity you had at such a young age. And I know we'll get into that. You were maybe four, but even kids that were the same scenario of what you went through. Let's say if there was nine others, right. I'm not sure if it ends anything like this. Well, it comes from knowing the history of what happened to uh, the talent before me. Yeah, but some people knew the talent too. You, but for some reason, it was in your nervous system, and you embraced it, owned it, and decided to ruminate, cogitate, and then manifest it. Well, I didn't want to be that guy that that was 30 years old talking about what I what I could have been. Yeah, amazing. And the talent that I had because I've seen it. And Amazing. they talk to me daily, and I didn't want that. Yeah. So, yeah. all right. So, um, so let's go back. So, senior year. Remember, we're right. talking about college. Um, you know, you're you're already Louisville, but you're having a really good senior year. And my whole thing was, did you get any kind of people saying, why why are you making a move to Louisville? And what was dealing with that like? Well, it was it, it was my before you even went. It was my introduction into because at this point, I never paid attention to newspapers. I was just solely focused on on the game. Mm. And when that attention came, Rick Pitino, it was a magnifying glass on me. Did it affect you in a way that you weren't ready for? Well, it did because I, cause the fans and, and, and the people turned against me. Mm. And it was like, oh, he's not really that good. How could he go? Yeah. And at the time, it was Terrence Todd, who was my teammate. They were yes, like, well, he's from Neptune. I'm yeah. from Red Bank. Okay. So I understand it. Yeah. He's your hometown kid. So they, like, he belongs there, not. Yeah. Not him, and I remember uh, Rick calling me saying, I'll come into a game. Mm. And so let let the coach, let the, the school know Rick is coming. So they made a, a big scene, you know, they they make a, a little section for him. Nobody can come, security. And I remember uh, being so scared that day. Yeah. And it was a big game, and I played the worst game of my life. Like yeah. literally, I couldn't make a shot. Yeah. But again, I played. Defense. Unbelievable defense. Yeah. 
But while I'm in that game, the fans are booing. Don't take him. Take take Terrence. Oh, and man. so I remember going in the locker room and being like, "He's gonna take the scholarship." What was that like though? What did that feel like? It felt like everything was ripped from me. But I'm did it a, bring you back to earlier feelings? Right. Yep. I'm in the locker room by myself, and I, you know, I hear the door open, and it's ripped. Mm. And I'm crying. He said, "Pick your head up," mm. and he said, "Listen." I saw everything that I needed to see. Mm. And I said, well, coach, I played. He said, no, you didn't. He said, you didn't quit on the defensive end. Mm. I know you were a shooter just by the way, you know, by the way, your form, your, your stroke. Yeah, you can see it. He yeah. said, but listen, I'm I'm convinced, you know, you don't have to prove anything to me. I saw everything I needed to see. Yeah. So pick your head up. This is one game. And once I got that validation from him, yep. my rest of my year was... You know, folks, we talk about getting the right mentors, right? We talk about getting the right mentors that are on the come up or at the peak of their game. That sounds like to me as one of his, you know, Taekwondo's had many mentors, but that kind of mentor being there, understanding the bigger picture, which in basketball terms is defense because defense does win championships. And if you're a good coach, you could tell by the way somebody shoots what their form looks like. And, And I think that the characteristic of who, Taekwon was in a moment when Rick came to see him and in his own mind didn't play well because we're brought up in a, in a system that points mean everything. The truth is it's how the team wins that means everything exactly. and what your impact is on that team. Exactly. And great coaches look for those kind of players. So all you players that watch this stuff understand, yeah, you, you might be good at three. You might shoot 40% for three, but if you're not making your team better and if you're not passing the ball and you're you are a liability on defense – You'll be exposed quickly, and certain coaches just won't look your way. That's amazing. Get with the right mentor that can help you turn decades into days. What do I mean? Shrink time. What do I mean? There was there was Taekwon. I won't name the other player. Um, the public thought they were the same. If not, the other player may have been better and should have had the opportunity that Tyke got. The truth is, though, Tyke went to Louisville. The other player didn't, and the rest is history. And that's where you shrink time. Because you got to get in proximity with people that are integrous, been there, done that, know how to build a system and a process, and can put the right pieces around you, which translates into a final four, four years later, or three years later. So what was it like the day after and for the rest of the season dealing with, um, you know, the situation of what school somebody should go to versus Did that ever change in your favor, or was that what you dealt with for the rest of the season? No, I mean... Getting the validation from Rick, I, I I got my wings. But as far as the community, I'm talking about the community. The oh stands. yeah, yeah, no, it, it still was the same. But at this point, when you know your purpose, you know your why. Yeah, I use anything for motivation. And they still cheered though when you scored thirty though. Yeah, they they did. Or was it sense. still? It, it still, was. I mean, uh, that's a shame for them. I mean, if you think uh, there's, there's no shots, I, I, I'm not in the Hall of Fame there. Yeah, um, really? after not even considered. How many points did you score there? Uh, I think sixteen hundred. In two um, years, and yep, yeah, and no consideration for it. No. Um, I think uh, I have enough accolades to receive something like that. Oh but, boy, I can't wait to run with this one. Yeah, yeah, no, oh, no. Oh, so it, boy. It, that's part of the reason why I never came back. Now I understand. I never came back because uh, Red Bank is home, but yeah. that wasn't you know uh, appreciated in in that tune as well. So and and just so we're clear. How did that season end for you from an accomplishment standpoint in the state of New Jersey? Oh, man. Uh, I think first public school to do what we did. Um, and you were what? First team? What was your? I was, uh, I think I was first team all state. Yep. Uh, first team all shore, uh, all shore player of the year. Um, so I was all shore player of the year, and your high school hasn't put you in the yeah. Hall of Fame. Interesting. No. no. I mean, all of our, our team, uh, Terrence had a great year. Did Marcus he get a scholarship? Austin. Yeah, yeah. He went to Fairfield. Now, Terrence was, he was um, a great. I remember seeing unbelievable him talent. Yeah, unbelievable. same position, same uh, point guard. I was shooting guard. Got it. The thing is, is the difference was as I went on the circuit, he didn't. Folks, you know? proximity is power. So I, I knew, you know, where to go, you know, and, and I capitalized on that. So who knows what it means when I say proximity is power and forward thinking and thinking in behalf of how to, how to once again, shrink time, be disruptive with integrity and leverage. Right. What Taekwon did is he went on the AAU circuit, right. right? Which gave him, a people have a different set of glasses than folks that don't go on the circuit. Right. And that gave him the, the chance to be seen, but then he had to deliver. 
Let's not forget that. Right. Being seen as one thing, Lenny Cook was seen. No offense, I'm not making fun of you, Lenny. I'm just saying, like you were, you were heralded the best, and and it's okay if somebody beat you, but not recovering after somebody beat you is not okay. Right. 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 And 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 Taekwon not only was able to to think about why it's important to be on the circuit. I'd love to know why you knew how to do that besides disruption, um, but also how that carried into a conversation when he basically hired Rick Pitino to hire him. Well, I you, love it all. Well, this you, is not normal. Well, you know what? Um, Nothing about this is normal. I got to give credit to John McGuckin of the Central Jersey Hawks. Okay. He was the first one to give me a shot at AAU, but he, he taught me how to play the right way. Mm. It was discipline, it was pass first, cut, you know, play proper basketball. And from there, uh, I had a, a landlord that, you know, when my mother passed, he, he promised he promised her that he would look after me. Yeah. And he kept his word and he sent me to Princeton basketball camp. Okay. And so Grammar I, school. Uh, Princeton University. But you were in grammar You were yeah. like eight, nine, ten. At the, yeah, yeah I, like I was around 11. Okay. And I got to stay on campus. Um, I got to see a university. I got to dream. Like yeah. he really literally allowed me to dream but from if you know anything about Princeton at the time with Carmody it was the, you know the flex offense yeah, whereas, you know team basketball so I learned that the, New Georgia the, the Central Jersey Hawks and this is what I what I want to give back to these kids now is everyone chases certain programs and I, I like to say when you put hard work and preparation opportunity finds you yep I and it found that. me with the Central Jersey Hawks in one game I, I dominated and the Long Island Panthers, which was the biggest Adidas team on the circuit, a representative was there. Now, are we on the circuit at this point? No, I'm, okay. I'm playing right. regular Central Jersey normal, Hawks. Normal AAU. AAU. And yeah. we won a state, you know, uh, the, the state championship, I mean the championship in uh, Orlando a few times. And so we were a, a great organization. But to that point though, right. you don't get the right set of eyes. Even no. though, okay, yeah. No, so they, you know, the representative was there and it's funny, uh, his name was Eddie Lau. And Eddie Lau saw me, he was he was a part of the program, but he literally talked to my to my guardian, but he pretended in a phone call that he was an actual player. Mm. Saying, hey, it's Curtis Sumter, Curtis Sumter went to Villanova. <laughs> but he was like, hey, we really want you, we really need you. They flew me out to, to Boo Williams the next day. And, and you were like 14? Yeah. Wow. And I, and flew me out and Here's the thing is you're new to a team. I'm not from New York. All these guys are from New York. Yeah, I you, fly, sure. you fly me in and you have to perform. Yeah, You have to be ready at any moment to perform. Yeah, And I just shot. I yeah. didn't care <laughs> you know, who my teammates were. I'm gonna do what I do. Yeah, And from there, I, the history was made. We were the, I mean, as of today, we were the number one AAU uh, team of all time. Wow. We won every tournament. We we dominated the summer. Wow. That's to where cool. they created a, a, a slam magazine game with uh, our team and LeBron and Sebastian. It was a closed door mm. game in Queens. How was how, how did the game? Well, uh, slam magazine live, but we dominated. Did you really? Team. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is for not only the players right now that could be watching this, because whatever you think is going to catch a coach's attention is probably not accurate. It really does come down to understanding that mistakes are such an unbelievable thing as long as you don't make them twice. And missing shots is a gift. It's not a bad thing as long as you're playing great defense and team basketball and you actually know how to play the game. So so th those intangibles and how you communicate and how you present yourself are powerful. Knowing... So now we know the world today yes. as social media. Yes. It sounds like the circuit was a lot more, it's still important. Right. It sounds like it was really important when you were coming up. Right. Am I wrong? And I, this is for me now, knowing the way we're using social media in such a disruptive, right. misdirected way, right. right? Does that, I'm not gonna say make an equalizer, but does that create a bump up for people that aren't on the circuit yet? Right that have the proximity of folks that can get in touch with coaches, right. backed up by the social media video resume. Yep. Does that equal the playing field a little bit? Uh, I'll, I'll give an analogy, Do Donald Trump. Now, no one knew he, he, they didn't think he would ever become president. Yeah. Right? He, he knew something that everyone else didn't. Control the narrative every day. Control the narrative, Twitter. Yeah. Nobody's gonna, he'll speak for himself. Yeah. He'll, put, he'll put his truth out yeah. before any, any newspaper can. Yeah. So 
it's the same thing what you're doing here with, with social media. Yeah. If you want to get recruited, uh, the phone is in everyone's hands 24 hours a day. No doubt There's about no it. no doubt about it. Even coaches. So Even coaches. Yeah. So they're going to go to their phones before they go to a website, you know, yep. uh, find a newspaper. And they're going to go to their phones and yep. if they see the algorithm that, who oh, is this Epic Elite? Yeah. They're going to see it. Yeah. They can't deny it. Yes. And so social media is now the new recruiting tool. Yeah. And if you're, if you're, if you know the algorithm, you know how to use it properly. Yeah. That's your recruiting tool. Yeah. And, and, and folks, I want to be clear um, because I know my strengths and I know my, my challenges and, you know, some of the things that would pop up when I first started this was who's Rob Gill? Right. Did he put anyone in college? And did he ever coach a game? Well, Rob Gill's a multiple business owner. He's never put anyone in college and he's never coached a meaningful basketball game. But what I did do is I applied my business mindset to Epic Elite AAU, which by the way, my staff or my team or my coaches are owners in it as well, not just me. Right. So when, when Taekwon says you, it's us. Because I... I am not going to take credit for what's about to happen on this thing. Right. You know, it, it's been a collective brain trust of everybody around me that know what I didn't know. And I think to take Quan's point when it comes to understanding social media, if I'm out there creating disruption, which I've been, behind me was a wave of really, I, I'd say we have the best coaching staff on the Eastern Seaboard at this point. You know, you have Eric Yankowski. You have Taekwon Dean, you have Billy Gilligan, you have Mike Amon, you have Fred Leo, and you have uh, Raheem Carter, right? Right, Like that that's all the collective brain trust that's come together for these two teams we built out the third team. Right. So now it's like, okay, how do we how do we show the world? And you and Eric just did your first ep episode of a docu-series, right. right? For the 17U. Right. We were up and spooking up for the weekend. They went one and two. Right. And the two losses were by the same team. We yes. documented the whole thing. because. Yes. We're not going to be the people that just show a highlight of a great move and a layup, right? right? We want right. to tell the whole story. Right. And um, this is what Taekwon brought. I, that wasn't my idea. I can't take credit for that. You know, Chris from from uh, Danny Drew, um, his uh, his video team really came and did a phenomenal job of spending the weekend with us. Yeah, they're great. And uh, Danny has put together a great team of photographers and videographers and the social media content with his partner Parker Russo is off the charts. You might, yeah. you guys want to check both of them out, Danny Drew and Parker Russo, PJR Designs, um, but but you have brought in the Hollywood version <laughs> of the documentary style, yes, right? Just watching, I watched it today. It was really good, right? You know, I saw it, and um, it's just important because I think that as we have internal conversations, it's like, hey, should we play in the B division? Should we play in the A division? Right. Hey, can we get this one player that's over there? Funny story. I I, I made a post. Because there's a player that I wanted to recruit yes. that I've never spoken to. And one of, I'm not even going to name them, the uh, opposing AAU programs put a picture of two hours later that it said he was signed with them, which was incredible because that means they were watching everything I was doing. Right. You know, So then we started saying, hey, you watch us, we don't watch you. Right. I'm not even sure if the player's there or not, to be honest with you. But when I saw that, for me, I just know how to stack and build and double down. It's like, right. all right, now I'm going to start putting pictures of everybody out there that I want to. Right. recruit for us. Right, right, right. And and I think what you've done magically is taken your you know your life your life's work of basketball and like you're fully committed to what this is. Yes sir. And this is so good for the kids. Yes sir. Cuz this isn't about a business for you and I. We're going to have our own offshoots off of this. Right. And if something happens great. Right. But we all have one common mission and right. that's really to create two-way fundamentally sound basketball players. Right. That learn how to share the ball that by the way know how to communicate to college coaches so if there's five players that look the same, numbers are the same, but the one guy has influence with integrity right. and knows how to communicate, well, he's going to get the job. He's right. going to get the scholarship. Right. Can you talk a little bit about that? Well, the, the first thing, uh, I don't want people to confuse that, you know, where especially you on social media and it, it's, it may be loud, it may be disruptive, but it's, it's integrity, it's sincerity, it's right. honesty. He's coming from a place where, you know, he's not trying to capitalize for himself. It's about the kids. Yeah. So let's not confuse, you know, what you see on social media as uh, there's a gimmick. It's, it's, it's pure sincerity and, uh, and honesty. Yeah, we write checks, right? We don't accept checks. Exactly. We write checks. Exactly. Epic writes checks. Exactly. But Legally, ethically, and with integrity. The thing is, for, for me, what this is, is uh, it's surreal because Raheem Carter is the reason why I picked mm. up a basketball. 
Really? Oh, I mean, Raheem is is the first uh, person that. in our family to graduate. You know, so he's he older. A diploma. Yeah, he's I older. Didn't, I didn't know that. Raheem, Sorry, Raheem. My my mother and Raheem's mother were cousins, but they were like sisters. Okay, got it. So Raheem is. I was literally like Raheem's little brother. Mm. So I watched everything he did. Nobody understands who Raheem really is. I mean, uh, Long Branch won three state championships. Who's him? Uh, he was at the lead, but you had. Um, they had one of the best teams in, in, in Shore Commerce history. Wow. And he was the head of it. Wow. So uh the thing is is Raheem uh was my was my uh was my guy. Okay. And so to be able to be next to him right now it's like it's a surreal feeling. Did he help you in high school with he some of your decision making? Er, everything. Raheem wow. was was it for me. Um I saw him win a state championship. So that was my next. Yeah. And he he, he went up against uh Samuel Dallenbert. Um yeah. Al Harrington and the show. Nobody knows this. And they beat them. And I was there. I didn't know. Up front row seeing this, and he allowed me to dream. So, yeah. you know, this is more about. Um, I had a, a guy named Eric Estevito, um, Joey Reigns. These are all the people who took me in. And, and the only thing they asked of me was pass it forward when you yeah. get the chance to, yeah. to do it. So, this is not coming from a place of I, I, I want a college, college coaching job or I want to. Ex, you know, use the kids to get my own own gain or benefit. This is simply just giving back what was given to me. You know, let, but let's 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 live in the space of capitalism with integrity, uh, wealth, and prosperity. Because by the way, when you're serving kids first, last, and always, there's nothing wrong with getting a job right. and being able to achieve financial success. Right. Because it's been my experience that the more money that comes in my direction, if I deploy it back into contribution and growth and it right. makes the world a better place. That's right. a good thing. Right. 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 So so it's not like, hey, um, if Nike making this up right. writes a check to Epic Elite and Rob Gill keeps it right. instead of dispersing it equally and back into the program. Yeah, that's that's, a a, that's who we are, by the way. Right. Right. <laughs> to be clear. So none of our coaches are making two thousand dollars for ninety days. I'll tell you that right now. Right. Um, and that's a shame by the way. <laughs> I know that model is broken. You know what? Coaches you deserve more if you're going to put time in and if you're going to give a program 90 or 120 days and on some level you're resenting that money, that could translate into the kids not getting the best version of you. So if anyone that's running these organizations and just because other organizations do it, the real disruption is to do the opposite of that and go get some partners that could help you pay for it because you want to make sure teams 3 through 10 where parents are paying 1000 or whatever they're paying, I don't even know right. the number, whatever the numbers they're paying, that those kids get better. It's not just an open gym that somebody's managing. Everyone will say to me, where where you take, I don't even know where this is going, So, but I lean on you a lot. Where do you see whatever's happening right now, not only with, with Epic and equally important, right. what about you? What is your next, what's the next journey? You got a book coming out soon. Yes. We're going to work on the title. I think it should be 3,000 shots, but... Yeah. My opinion does you know that I sound, is, that sounds that's a good good catch. This catch. is gonna be you. So right. but you got a book coming out where you're gonna be doing some consulting and motivational speaking and you have a, you're building a team of salespeople right. around you to be able to help that. Right. Can you talk a little bit about your future? Well, uh one, uh, uh when you manifest things, they they come out in ways that you don't expect. Yeah. And part of my Never. Manif- right. Right. Uh, part of my manifestation is walking and meeting you that day. Yeah. Uh once I didn't know what would come of it, but you were the missing piece to everything that I, I was trying to manifest. Yeah. And you gave me the leverage of of having the backing and the support of yeah, these guys. Your, your media team, yeah. um, the whole staff and you and 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 one one of the biggest things for me was uh I've been disappointed a lot. Mm. And you looked me in the eye and said, you know, I got you. So you have not wavered, you know, since and but so I, I see a, a big path of uh, just giving. Um, telling a story for me is not is not to glorify or or to to put out there about tragedy. It's yeah. about triumph. It is. And there's a lot of lot of kids hurting, um, whether they're privileged or not privileged. Yep. They can see that they can get out of any situation if yeah. they just dedicate themselves to whatever their passion is. So when you think back, that's a good point about kids that are hurting, right? And you're right, it's on both sides, privilege, non-privilege, right. doesn't matter what race, what color, it doesn't matter, it's right. a real thing. Right. If you if you could jump back into like, jump back into a time machine right. and go in different parts of your life, right. 
because you're whoever told you messages and whatever you perceived worked. Right. Right. But think of kids you know, no names. What kind of messages could they have heard at a time when you think about them now right. and what, what path they went down that they shouldn't? Right. What would that message be to that kid? For me to give to that kid? Yeah. Um, but, but now, not to you. Right. To the kid next to you that didn't go on your path but could have. Right. Um, you're going to make mistakes. Mistakes is part of, uh, of growing, as a part of learning. But at the same time, give yourself grace. Don't be too hard on yourself. Um, allow yourself to grow, but at the same time, have a, have a passion. Find your passion. Uh, love comes and goes. It wavers, but passion, it, it never dies. So find something that you're passionate in and work your, your ever-living day to achieve it because passion is always is going to drive you to the next level. So when you were coming up, did you know you had passion? Did you have to sometimes find it? Did you struggle with it sometimes? Like, was that always something that you were able to tap into? No, I mean, uh, for me, um, I never smoked, never drank, never knew. How did you stay I, away from it, though, uh, even in college? Well, Even I, after you became a pro? Right, well, I knew my purpose. And mm. what death taught me at, a, at an early age was um, not, I, I didn't fear anything. Really? And as bad as people may or or sad they they feel for me it was the i say for me it was the best thing for me to learn yeah. then people learn this later in life but i learned it early and it took the fair way where i felt i can achieve anything so you've refused to let people feel sad for you no. and use that as a weapon of manipulation as as crazy as it sounds the worst that can happen is i can die and i see my family again mm. so i'm gonna it was if you say it's impossible I'm gonna make it possible, mm. and I, I'll die doing. And doing you know, in the short time I got to know you, right. your level of empathy, which, by the way, look it up, is different than sympathy. You don't want anyone to be giving you sympathy, but empathy is a beautiful thing. Um, you have such a big heart, right? And you know, you've been through so much, right? right? And everyone's through, but everyone has a different level of what so much is in right. different situations. But yours was pretty, pretty crazy right. in, in normal terms. Right. Um, how? How do you have so much patience? Now, I'm, this is for me right now. Right. How do you have so much patience and empathy for people? Well, Even as you walked into my gym, and you know this was a critical, which I didn't know at that time, right. it was a critical meeting right. that we right. were having. Right. I, I wasn't aware of that. Right. But how do you do that? Well, I, I could tap into the feeling, feelings of hopelessness, um, not being heard, not being seen. Mm. I know what that feels like and it's not as it's the worst feeling in the world it is so i never want if i'm surround if i'm around someone i want them to feel that there's someone there that is either protecting or can help or you know will be be a backbone yeah. so i uh i'm a not to get uh too emotional with it but when my mother committed suicide in front of me the the feeling of hopelessness that I, I couldn't, you know, I couldn't help her yeah. in that situation. Um, I vowed to always, you know, be, if I could help, you know, if I could help prevent something or, yeah. you know, uh, stop something from happening, that's what I would do. So yeah. I live my life that way. How long was that feeling with you? I know, I know when certain challenges pop up, right. it brings you back to that moment. Right. I read that in your book, right. um, 3000 shots. Um, that's not the title, by the way, <laughs> just so we're clear. That's just like a little bit like subconscious, but because you talk about it, and, and I know in my life what that's like as right. someone in recovery, and that feeling of, finan for me, financial insecurity, not being heard, not being listened to, and feeling like no one cares. Right. A horrible feeling. How do you, how long did that stay with you when it first happened? Right. And how did you get out of it? And I know sometimes it doesn't just go away. It's always there waiting to show you that you're below average and right. you're not good enough. Right. 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 That voice is always there. But how did you break through that so fast? Well, I didn't. I didn't break through it until uh, four years ago. I didn't realize that. So you started to address it therapeutically with health? That was my crutch. Health, mental? When I realized everything that I worked for, um, I lost everything. Okay. I lost my career. I lost money. I was I was left with nothing, mm. and that was the biggest thing that I feared. That was before COVID. 
Right before COVID. Yeah, yep. yeah. The biggest thing I feared was going broke. So what we fear comes true, folks. Be yeah. careful. Whatever you're fearful of, if you say, why does this keep happening to me? Your brain of Google is going to point out your whole life, all the times you struck out, you missed a shot, you failed, you didn't kiss the girl, you didn't get the business deal versus what can I learn from this? How can I get better? Right. Increase my revenues. Then all of a sudden you'll think about all the shots you made, all the girls that you kissed, right. all the business deals that you got done. Right. Right. Powerful. Right. Talk on that, please. Well, I uh, said it before. How um, did you get the third? Like, what, how did you address? Like, you lost everything. Let's call that um, moment of clarity. Let's call that ground zero. Well, uh, you know, I lived a life of 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 trying to please everyone. Mm. Uh, I so wanted you feel guilty for your success. I wanted everyone to see me as as successful. That meant having a, a family. Yeah. Having a career. Yeah. Everything that I thought was was success. Yeah. And I was I wasn't being selfish, meaning mm. I wasn't caring for self first. I was caring for everyone else but myself. Yeah. And I found myself uh seeing everything about the crash, my career, my finances, and I had no one to to lean on. Yeah. Everyone could lean on me, but I couldn't lean on anybody. Yeah. And it broke me down so much that I I realized I need to speak with somebody. Yeah. And that's when my life began to change. We go through depression, uh, uh, anxiety, or I never those knew what different that, things. I yeah. never knew what it was, but yeah, I was I was very depressed. And this was over. You were in France. Or, I was in France. And yep. how long did you working through it? Like how long did it? Ooh, it, it it lasted for maybe two years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And being ashamed of, you know, you you hear about athletes going broke. You hear yeah, about they talk about it all the time. I had two divorces, uh, so it was a lot of failure. Your divorces are worse than taxes when right. it comes to money. Right. Yeah. I had a lot of failure. No one and, teaches us that. Right. And, you know, I, I blamed a lot of people. And of course. I finally had to look in the mirror and say, it was you. Yeah. And ca accountability was the, the very first step. So from the time you went to therapy and completed, was there a lot of hostility in your world those last three or four years leading yes. up to that? Got yes. it. I know what that's like. Yes. Yeah, I've been through that as well. Yes. Especially blaming. Yes. You know? Um, amazing, and I think that you know we talk about financial education at right. the elite. You know we're building out programs not only for mental health, right. not only for training, not only for tutoring for SATs, but also financial education. Yes. Right? Whether somebody makes the MBA or not, I can just tell you for me, economic temperature. I first made my first million in two thousand nine and ten, and I didn't deserve it right. in my mind. Right. So I did everything I attend I can subconsciously to prove that I didn't deserve it. Right. And all the things I feared came true right. in 12, 13, and 14. Right. Right? So right. I started over in 15. Yeah. To that point, do the things you fear to do, and the death of fear is certain. Yeah. Um, so where do you see the next three or five years, though? Let me go back to that. You know, we're talking about serving, contributing. We're talking about epic. But we're also talking about the brand of Taekwondo Dean, Takwa. Right. Like, Let's let's get into that. It's okay to to live in a, in a wealth, abundant mindset right. while you're serving. There's nothing wrong with that. Right. Especially if you make the world a better place. Right. It took me a long time to, to tell myself that I deserve. Yeah. I deserve something. And part of meeting you is you're 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 reaffirming that, you know, you belong here. You do. You deserve you deserve everything that, that's coming to you. Um the biggest thing that I see is helping helping kids, yeah. helping the masses, uh, you know, understand that they, they have a gift. Yep. And you can you can master it by Again, mental health therapy, talking, communicating, but giving as well. Yeah. I think uh, we 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 help help these kids now. They're gonna help, you know, kids in the future. It's just about yeah. And, and you know, it was funny because when we lost our game uh, Saturday, and you guys were doing a film study, and what I noticed because I I, I didn't play Division One, right. you know what I mean? I played right. Division Three, and we were not organized right. <laughs> like this. Right. And you guys were like, all right, get together and get to know each other. Right. Spend some time with each other. There was so many things that took place. And when you think about the journey of um, getting into an elite camp at, at a certain age and being flown to that camp and then, you know, disrupting in the middle of your high school career after the one situation in the one school, you get to another school, but you're not the hometown hero. Right. Um, but you also made a disruptive decision where you put yourself in proximity to speed up time. You then decided to, to not go to one school and go to another school, which right. at that point was a risk. Right. But you knew all these certain things. Dude. Then you get to Europe and you're kind of starting over, but you're noticing that, wait a second, they have a level of humility, they have a level of teamwork, right. and they love the game in a different way than they do in America. Right. But America had sent the tone, set the picture in 1992, but you saw that. 
but you also had to go practice every day. You had to play in your game. Right. And then at some point, you know, you have a, a really bad wrist injury. Right. Right. And the bone's sticking out. Yeah. And your money's drying up. Yeah. And there's a hundred American players waiting to take your spot, and you can't tell anybody you're hurt. And you know your your right hand yeah. is your is your great equalizer, your life's financial equalizer. Right. You don't know any other money except for that that right hand. Right. Yep. Right. You didn't really know about business yet. You didn't know that that was just the tip of the iceberg. Right. Right. That's just the story that's going to be told. And the fear of economic uncertainty to everybody is real. But you know what I just realized sitting here as we talk about all these athletes that. Um, you know, when their career ends within five years, statistically, there's like a 70, 80% of bankruptcy. Right. It all starts with mental health and financial education. And everybody has a certain kind of trauma. No doubt about it. And in, in, in my community, for sure, we don't have that, uh, someone that teaches about finances. Yeah. Uh, we don't come from finances, most, uh, most yeah. of us. So when we get it, you know, and the biggest thing is we don't want to seem like we're dumb. Yeah. We don't want to ask certain questions because we don't want to seem yeah. uneducated. Yeah. And my biggest lesson in that was ask all the questions. Yeah. Be the dumbest. It, it, be perceived as dumb. If, if it looks dumb, then be dumb. Yeah. But ask those questions and learn because if I would have took the time to just yeah. say, hey, I don't know yeah. what, you know, what stocks are, what bonds are. Ooh. Guys, you feel like something's happening right now? Because look, even people that go to college, and, and this is well, you might not know this, community-wise, like there are, no matter what community, you go to college, there's no real financial education in college. Not at all. There's no understanding of how money really works because the money system is designed for the banks, yes. the financial institutions, and the insurance companies to make, as well as the corporations to make all the money. Right. Corporations, they give me a cell phone. Yeah. It's meant to fail through play a dump lesson, so I buy the next cell phone. Yeah. Same thing with my car every four years. Yeah. Right? Same thing with the financial institutions. They tell me to do a 401k, which means the money goes there, stays in jail. Yeah. And then when I take it out, it gets taxed on ordinary income. No one teaches how to be an entrepreneur. No one teaches on how to... This is a startup, by the way. Epic Elite is a startup with an entrepreneurial background. And all the power players that are involved right now which, by the way, I'm, I, I've, I've paid every dollar that goes into here except for one sponsor, Sean Calgary of Unblinded, $25,000, to be clear. But we're building this out and then getting other sponsors that fit our profile that have to be entrepreneurs because they understand what a startup looks like. And because when, when you look at the fiber of education, and yeah, money education is the key, but also if we have kids, they're going to talk to coaches. We want to make sure they understand influence. You know, think of all these guys when they see me yelling and they look at each other and they say, this guy's crazy. I promise you, if you were sitting here and there was a neutral set of facts, mm -hmm. I would eat you up all day long, every day, twice on Sunday. Once again, my number is 732-558-1353. I'll take on any naysayers. Right. With that, thank you so much for being in my life. I can't thank you enough. Uh, I am super excited about what's next. Right. And, um, you know, we can leak it today if you want. Yes. But... Today I inquired about buying a piece of land oh. to build out our own epic elite, which would probably take two or three years. Right. But I made the first call right. to buy land to build out our own, um, what's called dome. I don't even know what you call it. Right. What do you call it? Uh, our own program, our own facility. Right. Uh, own academy, uh, own educational. Yeah. Uh, we have Dr. Mack on board, who is the, one of the number one SAT prep uh college uh tutors and, and uh academics out there and she's a part of this so we we're, we're not just covering financial sports we're covering education as well so yeah. the thing is, is is parents are looking for uh, a right organization or a right team you yeah. got to understand that we're coming from a place that i don't think many in the country are, are even thinking about yeah uh we we if you want if you want a uh, recruiting, we go directly. I uh, talk to Patino, you know, uh, once a week. I talk to Mick Cronin at UCLA, Maryland, uh, Shaheen Holloway, Seton Hall. I'm talking directly to the coaches. No middlemen, uh, directly. And that comes from the work and, and, and respect factor of the career that was put in. And, and our coaching staff, along with you, I don't see how you, you wouldn't think to bring your kid on over here. Because 
Yeah, and to that point, I'm sure your partner, Eric Gunkowski, could call Danny Hurley whenever he wants as well. Yeah, national champion. So, yeah. again, you know, everything that all bases are covered here yeah. and is, is built on integrity and, and sincerity. So, yeah. feel free to call, DM, whatever you want to do. Epic Elite AAU. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much. My man. Tyke, I appreciate it, yes, bro. Sir. I can't wait for the release of the book once again, sublimely 3,000 shots. But, you know, we could maybe we'll send it out to social media, ask them what they think it should be. Right. But this book is going to be sense. blockbuster. Yep. Wait until you read this story, this journey of redemption after redemption after redemption, going higher on the mountain, base camp increase, and then the story just started. It just started three weeks ago. I'm yeah. so excited. Anyway, thank you so much. Thanks for checking in, folks. Once again, uh, Rob Gill, Epic Financial Strategies. If you have any comments, comment below. Take this, rewind the back. Make sure if there's other videos or other guests you want us to get, let us know. And don't forget to click subscribe and follow. We're dropping nuggets daily.